God, fortune is my portion in 2024. Congratulations. Again, I count this a great privilege done to me by God through his choice servant, our father, both in the nation and in this house, to bring us a short word. Thank you so much, sir. Will you say with me, I am a child of destiny. Therefore, I will not live like a destitute. May that remain your portion in the name of Jesus. We began this teaching in our midweek, understanding the power of obedience of faith. And just like it sounds, the power of obedience lies in our understanding. Because nothing becomes outstanding except with your understanding. I'd like you to know that the responsibility of information is for it to be applied. Anything you know you don't apply becomes an entertainment. That is why the commitment to proving the little is what migrates us into much. James 1.22, he said, Be ye doers of the word and not just hearers alone. And he calls the person deceiving their own self. May that not be our portion in the name of Jesus. One thing that has been established since this month began is that obedience of faith is the master key. There are keys and there are a, there is a key that you have, every other thing can open up to you. Prayer has a place it can open. Your seat can open certain doors. But obedience opens every door, including that which the enemy has shut upon you. And I pray that as your obedience comes to life this month, every great door is opening for you in the name of Jesus. Mary preached one of the important messages to the disciples. He said, whatever he tells you to do, don't adjust. Don't explain it. Do it. Because those who give excuse, excuse themselves away from greatness. And I'd like you to know tonight that where God stops with you, like our Father have established this month, in your last place of obedience. That is, until you are ready to take baby steps of obedience, the giant inside of you cannot come up. Why is this important? Until God tests you, he cannot attest you. Until God has proven you in the place of obedience, he cannot approve you. And only those that have been trusted will be the those that will be entrusted so many things. Luke 16 verse 10, he said, if you have not been faithful in little, if you have not been faithful in that which is least, you shall not be faithful in much. And if you are not faithful in that which is unjust, forget about much. God's servant defined it better. Our father in the, the apostle over this commission, he said, you don't grow big to manage well. You manage well to grow big. That is, until you the test of obedience, so many great doors can never open. But I believe God for you, this is it. It's opening for you in the name of Jesus Christ. God called his servant, the apostle over this commission in the early part of this assignment. He said, I have a place for you at the top. Are you interested? He said, yes, I am. He said, then whatever I tell you to do, do it. And that is all summarized as obedience. But because of time, we have been looking at the various areas of obedience that delivers. Tonight, we are taking a, a step further. Knowing that as we do this precept upon precept, our life shall become brighter in the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight, I'd like you to know that God does not enforce obedience on anyone. Man is a creator of absolute choice. And every choice you make ends you up with a consequence. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. He said, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I've removed my hand as long as life and death is concerned. That when it comes to blessing and cursing, everything is now in your hand. And he gave us advice. He said, therefore, choose life so that you and your seed may live. Beloved, remember that this life is governed by cause and effect. You take one step, there is a reaction waiting to follow it. Every step of action will always be followed by a reaction. And when you pay the price of obedience, the order of blessings that you desire will always come. God's servant, the apostle of this commission, will always tell us that God's blessing always follows man's obedience. We were told a parable in Matthew 21 verse 28 of a man who had two sons. And he called to the first, he said, go to my vineyard and walk. And he responded to him. He said, I will not. But later he repented and went. And he called on the second. He said, likewise to him. He said, go to my vineyard and walk. He said, I go, sir. And they went not. And at the end of the day, he asked, which of these obeyed the father? 
And they, they responded to him the first. And Jesus said, the publicans are the, and the harlots are going ahead of you into the kingdom of God. Because I've come to understand that half obedience is equal to disobedience. And most times, delayed obedience equals to disobedience. All of these two we saw played out in that scripture. The first one agreed, but he did it halfway and he didn't do it. And the second one agreed and he changed his mind and never did it at all. Beloved, between when the God gave you the last instruction and where you are now, where has your obedience played a part? Because I'd like you to know that opportunity is always coming once and again. But once it is missed, it can never be regained. I pray that God will give you understanding in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Don't get it twisted. God will never place a demand on what he has not deposited on you. 1 John 5, 3. Because his commandments are not grievous. But until our obedience is complete, we cannot avenge any disobedience. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. In verse 6, he said, having all readiness. That is, having all totality to revenge whatever the devil will place on your way. When your own obedience is complete. Anything after your best is what God will do. That is why it is said, do your best and God will do the rest. Can I hear a loud amen? amen. So whatever you and I become in this kingdom is only obedience determined. For example, whosoever chooses to be saved is welcome into the kingdom of God. As free as salvation, God will never enforce himself upon any man. John chapter 6 verse 37, Jesus said it categorically. All that the Father has given unto me, they shall come. Speaking of their own volition. And as they make the choice to come, I shall in no wise cast out. So which means that grace may be available, but that same grace can be used in vain. Just like Titus chapter 2 verse 11, he said that the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto everyone. But the question is, is he everyone that has accepted the grace? Because the grace can be in abundance and it can still be used in vain. Beloved, even though there is rescue, but until you accept and come into the terms with it, it cannot be able to answer to you. So salvation is a pure choice that we make as long as we are concerned. Number two, no one can purge himself. Anyone can purge himself if he truly chooses to. Because purging, even though there is available help by the blood, but the honest truth is that every man has to be the one to clean himself. Second Timothy chapter 2, let's begin from verse 19. He said, the foundation of God standeth sure. And having this seal that the Lord know them that are his. And he said, let everyone that names the name of Christ depart. So there is a responsibility clearly. Why? Verse 20. For in a great house there are not just vessels of gold. There are vessels of silver. Vessels of wood. Vessels of earth. Some for honor and some to dishonor. But here is the caveat. If any man will purge himself, conditioner. From all of these things, then it becomes a vessel unto honor that is sanctified and meet for the master's use. And the same vessel is prepared unto every good work. Beloved, I'd like you to know, even though we are all the same in the Father's house, but God has categories of vessel that he uses per time. When guests come to your house, you don't serve them with a plastic cup. You bring the nice decorated ceramics. Why? Because they have prepared themselves unto good works. The same God who created the gold is the same God who created the earth. But where you end up is a product of your purging. And that is why nobody who meddles with sin will ever see greatness. Beloved, greatness is not a gift that God dashes. It is a responsibility that you take part time and it brings you to the final destination. May God give you understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Watch anyone who is romancing iniquity today, they never go far. Why? It is clearly stated because if the foundation is destroyed, no matter the hundred days of fasting, it cannot change it. So until we correct the foundation, the building is only going to crash with time. We have heard so many times in the news, you saw a very nice looking edifice. In the, in the course of time, Everything is falling down because something was wrong in the foundation. And the easiest way to kill every act is to, be, to kill it when the thought props up. 
And that is why First John chapter 3 verse 3, he said that every man that has this hope, which hope of eternal life, that has the hope of being a worthy vessel, this man must purify himself. There is a responsibility. Because until we clean up, God cannot show up to us. And remember, your cleaning is your responsibility. There might be water available. There might be soap. There might be everything that you need for the cleanup. But at the end of the day, until you get into the shower and clean yourself from everything, it remains in the same state it is. No wonder there are certain things that have not changed because God is waiting for you to cross this classroom. Until we get it right in purging and purification, certain things cannot turn. But I believe God that the grace is available in the name of Jesus. Why are we saying all of these things? Your obedience speaks louder than your voice in the kingdom. What you are saying, compared to what you are doing, God is paying more attention to what you are doing than what you are saying. First Samuel chapter 2, he said that God is a God of knowledge, for by him your actions are weighed. So those who are confessing it, and those who are professing it, they are in different, in different classes. We saw that John chapter 2, beginning from verse 3, when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said to them, he said, they have no wine. He said, woman, what have I to do with it? My hour has not come. However, he went to the servant, he said, whatever I tell you to do, do it. And in the place, Bible told us, verse 6, that there were six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, having two, three fakings apiece. And Jesus said, fill the water pot with water. And he said, fill it to the brim. And the next instruction was draw out and give to the governor of the feast. No prayer. He didn't say, let's agree and hold our hands and pray over it. The same instant, you know that that is water. But by obedience, as that water is carried in your hand, that step of obedience is transforming it into wine. There are many people that for years, they are still carrying the cup of water in their hands. Why? They are still explaining how will it happen. I'd like you to know that when you hear go and you go, the remaining part of the actions are waiting. Because when God speaks, everything in nature will hear. So what converts everything God has said to pass is the obedience of faith. Because faith is more of a driver. It drives you into action. God's servant has taught us that every faith that is waiting for God to be completely, absolutely responsible for where you end is an irresponsible faith. And that is why, as long as we take responsibility, we are getting to our place of greatness. Can I hear a loud amen? amen? In John chapter 9, we saw the story of the man who was born blind. Beginning from verse 1 to 8, the master said unto him, in verse 4, he said, I, was, I must walk the works of him that has sent me while it is day, because the night is coming when no man can walk. Verse 5, he said, as long as I'm in this world, I'm the light of the world. After he spoke, he made a clay of the spittle and anointed the eyes of the man and said, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. The question we needed to ask, how will he see the pool? And how will he identify that this is Siloam and this is Jordan? What I'm drawing from that place is that even in disability, there is an ability there. When God sends you, you have the ability, even in your own particular state. It is only those who say, how will I do it, that discredit themselves from the power of what God is about to do. Remember, the four lepers, so to say, they said, even if we sit here, we'll die. And even if we decide to take steps, we'll still die. Either ways, we decide to choose our death. And they chose abundance of life. Beloved, if you want to see the best of God, learn how to give heed to the instructions of God. John 21 in verse 5. When Jesus saw the disciples by the pool, by the water, he said, children, have you any meat? And they said, no. He said, cast your net on the right side of the ship. And when they did it, they were not able to draw from the abundance of fish. It is the same stream, the same net, the same strategy that we are using. What now gives us a difference is that when God is involved and you give him the chance, there will always be a difference. Remember the wedding of the Cana in Galilee? Jesus was invited. And Jesus was involved. 
Many people have invited Jesus into their lives, but they have not involved him in their day-to-day -day life. That is why it looks like life is just an adventure in frustration. From where you are, if you desire to see the next, learn how to let go and let God in every of your ways. That is why Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5, he said, trust in the Lord with the whole of your heart. And he said, do not lean in your own understanding. Because understanding has a way of telling you that I have this thing figured out. And verse 6, he said, in all of your ways, in all of your ways, whether it's your business, family, children, whatever it is, he said, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Beloved, I'd like to remind you that life is like a wildlife park. Only the guide will take you to where you can be free from harm. And what is our example tonight? We have the example of the blessed Abraham. What was it? He stepped into generational blessings through his raw obedience of faith. Unnegotiable. Let's begin in Genesis chapter 12. Verse 1, Lord said to him, get thee out of your country. At what age? 75. To a land that I will show thee. An age where he ought to be settling down. That was when God was about to migrate him to go and start a new life completely. A proverb we grew up from, we grew up with in our youth is that you don't learn how to use a left hand in your old age. But this was the time God was about to bend him to flow with his instructions. And he said, if you bend to follow me, verse 2, I will make of thee a great nation. Did it happen or not? He said, I will bless you and I will make your name great and thou shalt be a blessing. The condition is if you will leave your father's house. Beloved, nothing ever grows on comfort zone. If you want the best of God, learn how to step out of your comfortability. The truth of the matter is instructions may not be palatable, but they have the ingredients for your change of story. Can I hear loud amen? amen. And he said, if you follow where I'm sending you, verse 3, I will bless them that bless thee, and anyone that cause thee shall be cursed. The question I have is, what if he remains in his father's house? So anyone that causes him in his father's house, the curse will stick. But as long as he's stepping away from that place to where God has sent him, everything will align. When you do what you expected to do, God will always bring the rest into pass. Last Wednesday, God's servant taught us something very crucial. He said, in the equation of miracle, God is always constant, but man is the variable. That is, God is always faithful to whatever he says, but in bringing the miracle to happen is always the factor of man. In every change of story, there is a God factor and there is a man's factor. So until your part is played, don't expect God's part. For example, what is the demand of this season? One winner, one soul. The question I have for you tonight is your soul in church. If they are in church, have they been established? Because you may have been praying for a change of story and God is telling you this is the only thing that will bring you a change of story. You may have been waiting for a miracle job and God is telling you the soul I told you to bring inside of that same fish lies the golden coin. Beloved, inside every obedience brings a turnaround for us. Genesis 22 in verse 16, because of time, he said, by myself I have sworn. Because you have done this thing. And I have not withheld my demand. That in blessing, I will bless you. Even though Solomon was great, he didn't get his one blessing. He said that in blessing, anything that is called blessing in creature, he said, I will bless you with it. Why? Because you have done one thing. And you and I know that as seeds of Abraham, we have the capacity to inherit what he got. But the only thing that activates what every man carries is in taking the steps after the man. Don't wish for Abraham's blessing if you don't have the mind for Abraham's obedience. As we read, get ready to wrap up tonight, the obedience that must work, number one, must be a fear-free obedience. The obedience that is void of fear. Fear of tomorrow, fear of the future, fear of old age. The reason why many people have not been tightened is if I give this one, what will I eat? Many people have the mentality of the widow who Elijah met. He said, I'm about to eat this thing and will die. 
But inside that thing you are holding and you want to eat it and die, God is saying that out of it, I will bring abundance inside of it. But until you are willing to lay down, like we were told in the, during the offering time, until your seed goes down, certain needs in your life cannot be met. And Job chapter 1 verse 3, we have an example telling us about the substance of Job. He said his substance was 7,000 sheep. 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she asses, and a great store of household. And look at verse 8. And Satan said, unto, and the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? That in the whole of the earth, none is like him. In all of this is a perfect, upright, and a man that fears God and excuses evil. And Satan answered, Does he fear you for nothing? What are we going to get from this equation? We saw that because Job was involved in what we call total obedience, God built a hedge around him. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 13, he said, Who is it that will harm you if you are a follower of that which is good? If you are a follower of that which is good, which is the ways of God, nothing can harm you. And the Bible said that if God be for you in obedience, nothing can be against you. The truth of the matter is this. Many are the afflictions that will come. But my Bible said that when the enemy shall come like a flood, the spirit of God, which is also the spirit of obedience, shall lift up a standard against them. When a man pleases the Lord, even his enemies, they will wash and that they will be eating with him. That is why Psalm 23, he said he prepares a table, not in the presence of your father-in-law, the presence of your enemies, so that they will see it and they won't do anything about it. Can I hear loud amen? So the missing equation is your obedience and my obedience. That is why John, 1 John chapter 4, I believe verse 18, he said that perfect love will always drive away fear. Because anyone who is living in fear, his love has not been made perfect. And one way we prove our love for God is by taking steps of obedience. Finally for tonight, resolute and unwavering obedience that is, obedience they are against the unbearable, irrespective of the weather, irrespective of the lions on the way, you are willing to step out. We saw the story of the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, before the king Nebuchadnezzar, in Daniel chapter 3, 14 to 28. He said, we are not careful to answer before in this matter. Neither, he said, do, do you not serve the gods or worship the golden image which I have set up? And verse 16, he responded to him. He said, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. If it be so, the God whom we serve, verse 17, is able to deliver us from the very bonny fiery furnace and he will deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, should it be that God forgets us? Known to you that we are not negotiating a place of obedience. I'd like to pause here and ask this question tonight. At work, when you feel that God is not looking at you, do you bend the rules in order to please you? Because only those who don't bow, they were the those that will never be born. As long as you bow, as you bow down to the golden calf, eventually you will bond with others. You remember the part of that story? Those who threw them inside, they were the ones that were consumed. Beloved, your obedience is total and resolute. Nothing can be able to stop you. Hebrews told us, beginning from verse 32, through faith, they were able to quench the mouth of lions. They wrought mighty things. Even death were subject unto them. Why is this important? Because when God goes, when God sends go, and you go, he goes with you. There is no man who God sends on an assignment and he abandons them. That is why Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always. Any man with God has nothing to fear. Because he said, I will fight for you to hold your peace. I'd like you to know that the taste of everything is in the eating. No matter how much obedience is explained to you from this altar, until you take a step, you cannot be able to get the benefit that is in it. But I believe for you and for me tonight that help has finally come in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, God will not force you to obey him. But at the end of the day, they all appear before the judgment seat. 
So every instruction that God gives you at time, do you explain it away or do you align in obedience? For example, this is in, we are just a week and a few days to go. Are you seeing the need to plug into it to be a driver of what God is doing? Because when it comes to dealing with God, obedience is your own story changer. Everyone that reaps and as many that plant, all of them are one. But every man shall receive his own reward according to their own labor. Therefore, as the spirit of obedience is poured forth this month, may you receive grace to step out in the name of Jesus Christ. The destiny of every true child of God emerges in obedience. Because everything is useless without having a purpose. Everything can only be as useful as the purpose of it. If God has planted you to be a microphone, for example, to amplify the voice, and you are still in the kitchen, your value is wasting away. But when God tells you, this is what I want you to do, and you do it, you become a man and a woman to be envied. But beloved, welcome to your season of all round rest in the name of Jesus Christ. Give him a big clap of praise, and please rise up to your feet. Hallelujah. I like one time I just took a time and I began to what could Noah have told all the animals that every one of them marched to the ark most times if you take a cue you discover that sometimes the animals obey more than man lion is time to march into the ark the elephant, the serpent, the tortoise which is the craftiest and all of them your mouth said go, they marched in they didn't ask well, is there an AC or air conditioner inside the ark do you have a three square meal for us inside the ark? If it is you and I will be asking, well, how will my children survive? I'd like you to know that as you step into obedience, you are stepping into the ark. So tonight, the ark of God is fully open. For as many that have not a heart to Jesus, you want to say, Lord, this thing called obedience is almost becoming an impossible equation. So you want to return back to God in sincerity and in truth. Because except a man be Born again, you cannot see the value of the kingdom. So can I ask that our eyes closed tonight and our head bow? You want to return back to Jesus in sincerity and in truth? Or you want to rededicate your heart to him? Quickly make your way to the altar straight away. We are already out of time. You want to make him the Lord and your personal savior. Wherever it is you are, come forward. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can you please put your hands on your chest and repeat after me? Say with me, Lord Jesus. I come to you today. I know that I need help. I know you died for that same reason. Now come into my heart. Be my Lord and my personal Savior. Accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Holy Spirit, grant me help to run this race both now and forevermore. Thank you, Father, for I am born again in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for your precious son you have drawn into the kingdom tonight. His saving hand, let it keep him to the end in the name of Jesus. We declare his sins forgiven and we declare him on a brand new beginning with you. He shall be forward ever and backward never. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 